We recognize that each of us is not so much a person as a world, or rather the bearer in her or his self of a world, a unique, irreplaceable, populated world, linked by a myriad threads to other such worlds. And that if, when someone dies who has been a part of our life, there is a rent in the universe, like a star vanishing, but that like a star vanishing, that world leaves ineradicable traces in us, as a star does in space, so that we mourn, but we remember, and we know that there will be a living trace of that person in, in our consciousness always. Those were the words of Rabbi Sheila Shulman. We've come today to remember and to honor David. And those of us who are here to offer our love and support to the family do so knowing that it is a privilege that we get to perform that mitzvah. And to Myra and to Al, to Gail, to Stephen, and to Mitch, we know at this time that our words offer little comfort, but please find in our presence the fact that we care about you and we love you. And we want to hear stories of David's life. And we want to support you as you keep his bright star shining on for as long as possible. The service is an opportunity for us to begin doing just that. And we know that this is not the end and there will be so much more. So look to us as a support as open ears who truly want to hear all that you have to share. We continue with Psalm 16. Shiviti Adonai, Landi Tamid, Kimi Mini, O Emot, Lachin Samach Libi. taken our beloved David. Our friends grieve in their darkened world. In their silence there is lamentation. In their tears there is loneliness. Lost in their sorrow, may they find the presence of loving friends. Hear them, O God, be with them. For David's love that united us in life and which death cannot sever for his companionship that we shared along life's path and which continues through the tenderness of memory, for the gifts of his heart and mind that brought us joy and happiness and is now a precious remembrance. For all these and more, we give our thanks to God. In this time of grief, we listen to the voice of our sacred scriptures that bring us the ever new message of God's nearness it tells us of our kinship with the Creator, in light as in darkness, in joy as in sorrow, in life as in death. And a reading from The Return of the King, chapter 9, 
Frodo and Sam have met the elven folk to the part Middle Earth. Where are you going, master, cried Sam, though at last he understood what was happening. To the haven, Sam, said Frodo, and I can't come. No, Sam, not yet anyway, not further than the havens, though you too were a ring bearer, if only for a little while. Your time may come. Do not be too sad, Sam. You cannot be always torn in two. You will have to be one and whole for many years. You have so much to enjoy and to be and to do. But, said Sam, and tears started in his eyes, I thought you were going to enjoy the Shire too for years and years after all you have done. So I thought too once, but I have been too deeply hurt, Sam. But you are my heir. All that I had and might have had I leave to you. Your hands and your wits will be needed everywhere, and that will keep you as busy and as happy as anyone can be, as long as your part of the story goes on. On the white cards you were handed as you came in, we have Psalm 23, and I invite you to read along with me. God is my shepherd, I shall not want. God makes me lie down in green pastures, leads me beside still waters, and restores my soul. You lead me in the right paths for the sake of your name. Even when I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You have set a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of God forever. Psalm 121, I lift my eyes to the mountains. What is the source of my help? My help comes from Adonai, maker of heaven and earth. God will not let your foot give way. Your protector will not slumber. See, the protector of Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. God is your guardian. God is your protection at your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. God will guard you from all harm. God will guard your soul, your going and coming, now and forever. Adonai Shmocha Mikol Chayishmok Et Nafshecha Adonai Shmok Setcha Uvoecha Meata Ve Adolam. The fact that all people eventually die has always served as a lesson to the living. We cannot long evade the consciousness of our own mortality and fail to draw therefrom some fundamental lesson on how to live our lives. As we become conscious of this fact, we cannot help but repeat the prayer of the psalmist. Limnot yamenu ken hoda v'navi levav chokhmah. So teach us to number our days that we may get us a heart of wisdom. It takes great wisdom to use the days that God has granted us wisely and well. For once we have let time pass, we can never reclaim it. On the other hand, 
All that has happened within that time is never lost. Passing time is not only a thief, it is also a trustee. And whether we regard time as a thief or as a trustee determines how we will live our lives. We can live our lives in fear and sadness, like a man who daily tears a sheet from his calendar and thinks only that the calendar grows thinner with each passing day. Or we can live our lives with joy and hope and a sense of achievement, like a man who keeps a calendar diary and each day records his daily accomplishments, filing away each annual volume with its predecessors. The family of such a person can, at an hour such as this, reflect with pride and joy on all the richness that has been set down in these notes. They can look back upon a life that has been lived to the fullest, and they can rest assured that not only the reality of work done, but of love loved and of suffering suffered. And that all that is good and beautiful in that life will be safely preserved and treasured in the hearts and memory of those whose lives have touched and been touched by such a man. David was a faithful trustee of the days and years granted to him. And Gail and Stephen share the following. David was Gail's Ezech Konegdo, her sacred partner, as intended by the creation of Adam and Eve in the story of Genesis. He was helpful to her and supportive of her work as the doyen of death. Dave was very detail-orientated, down to the care and attention he gave his mustache. <laughs> and he also had an incredible sense of humor, which never seemed to wane. When he was a teenager, he thought he'd become a rabbi, but that didn't happen. Yet as a cartoonist and graphic designer, he illustrated many children's books for the publisher Torah Ora. He did graphic designing for the Yellow Pages, Scholastic, and as a freelancer in New York. He could tell with a glance if a line of text was one pika off. He had wonderful handwriting. He moved to Albuquerque, New Mexico in 1990 with his former boss, Raul Libretto, who moved west at his invitation, they founded Noble Graphics. After the business wasn't fun anymore, they closed the company and he went back to school to become a teacher. He wanted to give back, so he joined the faculty at Rio Grande High School. There he taught English, film, and journalism. And in 2010, he became a national board certified teacher. Dave had very high standards for his students, which Stephen attributes to their upbringing in which education played a crucial role. Gail has also asked that I share the following. She knew what David's wishes were for medical and end of life care. Thanks to the careful and attentive pre-planning they had done, which included both advanced and medical directives and funeral arrangements. If you have not, done, if you have not yet done so, Gail would like you to strongly consider your own mortality and lessening the burden on those who survive you by making your own arrangements. When we are dead and people weep for us and grieve, let it be because we touch their lives with beauty and simplicity. Let it not be said that life was good to us 
but rather that we were good to life. Dave was good to life. Those touched by his presence, by his love, by his attention and devotion were blessed indeed. May his memory be an enduring and cherished source of comfort and an inspiration to us all. Kenye Ratson, may such be the divine will. Part of being here, those of us who've come to comfort the mourners, is to not only show our presence, show our, yes, our presence through simply our attending, but also through our support and participation. And so I invite you to repeat after each line the cantor has read, we remember Dave. We remember David, however you knew him, as a son, as a brother, as a husband, as a brother-in-law. However you knew Dave, this is your opportunity to acknowledge that connection. In the rising of the sun and in its going down, we, we remember, remember Dave. Dave. In the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter, we, we remember, remember Dave. Dave. In the opening of buds and in the rebirth of spring, we, we remember Dave. Dave. In the rustling of leaves and the beauty of autumn, we, we remember Dave. Dave. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we, we remember, remember Dave. Dave. When we are weary and in need of strength, we, we remember, remember Dave. Dave. When we are lost and sick at heart, we, we remember, remember Dave. Dave. When we have joys we yearn to share, we remember Dave. Dave. So long as we live, he too shall live, for he is now part of us, as we remember Dave. In his sorrow, Job cried out, Adonai Natan, Vadonai Lakach, Yehishem Adonai Mevorach. God has given and God has taken away. Blessed be the name of God. An ancient people we are well acquainted with grief and with the valley of shadows. Death and sorrow are not strangers to us. Yet the centuries have taught us that a good name enjoys beyond the grave and that there is strength in faith. With Job we say, Adonai Natan, God you have given. You gave us a loved one who will not be forgotten. For all that was good and enduring in his life, we offer the deepest thanks of our hearts. Adonai Lakach, God, you have taken away. We pray for the strength to turn our broken hearts into an altar of trust before which we acknowledge your sovereignty and love. As we now say, Yehishem Adonai Mevorach, blessed be the name of God, now and forever. We take a moment of silent reflection. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh God, our strength and our redeemer. The family also asked that I read the following text called you want a physicist to speak at your funeral it is from a transcript of a speech given by writer and performer Aaron Freeman on NPR news all things considered you want a physicist to speak at your funeral you want the physicist to talk to your grieving family about the conservation of energy so they will understand that your energy has not died. You want the physicist to remind your sobbing mother about the first law of thermodynamics, that no energy is created in the universe and none is destroyed. You want your mother to know that all your energy 
every vibration, every BTU of heat, every wa wave of every particle that was her beloved child remains with her in this world. You want the physicist to tell your weeping father that amid the energies of the cosmos, you gave as good as you got. And at one point, you'd hope that the physicist would step down from the pulpit and walk to your broken-hearted spouse there in the pew and tell him that all the photons that ever bounced off your face, all the particles whose paths were interrupted by your smile, by the touch of your hair, hundreds of trillions of particles have raced off you like children, their way forever changed by you. And as your widow rocks in the arms of a loving family, may the physicist let her know that all the photons that bounce from you were gathered in the particle detectors that are, that are her eyes. That those photons created within her constellations of electromagnetically charged neurons whose energy will go on forever. And the physicist will remind the congregation of how much of all of our energy is, is given off as heat. There may be a few fanning themselves with their programs as he says it, and he will tell them that the warmth that flowed through, your through you in life is still here, still part of all that we are, even as we who mourn continue in the heat of our own lives. And you'll want the physicist to explain to those who loved you that they need not have faith. Indeed, they should not have faith. Let them know that they can measure that scientists have measured precisely the conservation of energy and found it accurate, verifiable, and consistent across space and time. You can hope your family will examine the evidence and satisfy themselves that the science is sound and that they'll be comforted to know your energy is still around. According to the law of the conservation of energy, not a bit of you is gone. You're just less orderly. <laughs> Amen. And from Song of Songs, chapter five. How is your lover different from any other? O oh, beautiful woman, who is your lover that we must swear to you? My beloved is milk and wine. He towers above 10,000. His head is burnished gold, the mane of his hair black as the raven, his eyes like doves by the rivers of milk and plenty, his cheeks a bed of spices, a treasure of precious scents his lips red lilies wet with myrrh, his arm a golden scepter with gems of topaz, his loins the ivory of thrones inlaid with sapphire, his thighs like marble pillars on pedestals of gold, tall as Mount Lebanon, a man like a cedar, it's like a cedar, his mouth is sweet wine, he is all delight. This is my beloved, and this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. The prayer, El Male Rachamim, asks God to welcome Dave's soul under God's wings of tender shelter and protection. So as we recite it, both in Hebrew and in English, I invite you to stand, either in body or in spirit, however feels most comfortable to you. Shochen bam ramim, am 
Compassionate God, eternal spirit of the universe, grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence to David, who has entered eternity. O God of mercy, let him find refuge in your eternal presence, and let his soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. God is his inheritance. May he rest, at, may he rest in peace. And let us say, Amen. Please be seated. Our funeral service will continue at noon at Fairview with the burial. Shiva prayers will be held tonight and tomorrow night at 7 p.m. If you are planning on visiting the family before those prayers, Please do not do so before 6 p.m. There's a beautiful, beautiful teaching in Judaism that reminds us that when we enter a house of mourning, we are meant to remain silent until first spoken to by the mourners. It is an opportunity for so many of us who struggle with that silence in between people, to exercise what is called timsum, withdrawing from a space, to give kavod, to give honor and space to those who in that moment need it and to whom it is due. You'll have an opportunity to greet the family as mourners um, just at the end of this service and then again um, if you need directions or the address of the cemetery, please feel free to ask one of us and we can tell you where you're going. We'll try. One of us knows a bit better than the other. Um, there will be a procession. I'm, of course, I'm sorry, Gail. So um, there will be a um, procession so you can go along and know for sure where you're going. Um, if I can ask you to please remain in your seats until... Dave has been brought out and the family has exited. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 